Construct regular polygons with a compass and straight edge, 6.1e. We're going to need a compass and straight edge for this lesson. We can construct polygons that are both equilateral and equiangular by inscribing them in circles. We learned about equilateral and equiangular in video 4.2. We learned about inscribing in circles in 5.2b. This is an equilateral and equiangular triangle inscribed in a circle. And some of you may be familiar with da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. He's inscribed in a circle. We can construct a regular quadrilateral. The first thing we do is construct a circle. We can label it P. We can label it anything you want, but we're going to have a lot more labels coming around, so P is far away from the beginning of the alphabet, so it might help. So we put a point P on our paper, and we make a circle with our compass going all the way around. Okay. Then we draw a diameter AC through P. Then we construct the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. And if you don't remember, we set our compass a little bit farther past P, and we put the point on A, and we make an arc, keep the same setting, put our point on C, and make an arc. And where these two arcs intersect, we draw a line through it, and that's our perpendicular bisector. And we can label that B and the bottom one D. Now all we have to do is draw segment AB, BC, CD, and DA, and we have polygon ABCD. It's a regular quadrilateral. It's a four-sided polygon with four congruent sides and four congruent angles. And we can use angle bisectors to make a regular octagon from this drawing. To make an angle bisector for angle APC, we learned how to make angle bisectors back in chapter 1 in video 1.3. We make an arc from P, like this, a little arc, and where it intersects AP, we put our compass, and we're going to make a little X here, and then we put it on CP right here where it intersects, and we make our other cross for our X, and from P through the intersection of this little X, we go to the end of the circle here, where it intersects, we can mark that E, and we can draw segment AE, EC, and we do that for each angle, we can do it for CPB, BPD, DPA, and we can make these little segments here and repeat it, and we'll construct a regular octagon. We can construct a regular hexagon. We construct a circle P, just like we did before, and we draw a point A on the circle. You can put it anywhere you want. And we keep the same compass setting we used to make the circle. So we're going to have the same distance here, okay, like that. And at A, we mark off equal parts along the circle. So we put our point on A, we make a little arc. Put our point on that intersection, make a little arc put our point on that intersection, make a little arc, and we do it all the way around. We can label the points where the arcs intersect the circle as B, C, D, E, and F. Now all we have to do is draw A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, F, E, F, and F, A. And we've got a polygon, A, B, C, D, E, F, that's a regular hexagon. Ignore this part right here for a second. And it's a six-sided polygon with six congruent sides and six congruent angles. And as shown here, we can use angle bisectors to make a regular dodecagon. That's a 12-sided polygon. So we're going to use the drawing of our hexagon to make a dodecagon. And what we do is we make segments from P to B and P to A, and we do it to each of these vertices. We make a little arc from here, from P, and where this arc intersects AP, 
we make a little arc here and where it intersects PB. We put our point here and make a little arc. So we make our little X. We draw a segment through P and we create point G. And that's where we can make AG and GB and do it going all the way around. And we'll make a regular dodecagon, a 12-sided polygon. We can construct a regular pentagon. We construct circle P again and draw a diameter and label it as segment AB. We draw it through P. Next, we construct a perpendicular bisector of segment AB. We put our compass a little bit farther than P. We make a big arc with the same setting. We put it on B, make a big arc, and where they intersect, we draw our perpendicular bisector. We can label that E. And the next thing we're going to do is find the midpoint of PB. We put our compass on P and make a little arc. Put it on B with the same setting, make a little arc, just like we did with the perpendicular bisector. We draw a line through those two intersections and we can label that C. Now what we do is set our compass to the length CE, this length right here, and we place the point of our compass at C and we draw an arc that intersects segment AB and that'll be right there. We can label that D. Now we set the compass to the length ED, this length, and starting at E, we mark off equal parts. So it's this length, and we put our point on E, and we can make an arc. We can put it on this J, make an arc, put it on this one, make an arc. Put it on this one, make an arc. We also could have started on this side and made an arc and then started going around clockwise. We can label the points as F, G, H, and J. Now we can draw segment E, F, and F, G, and G, H, H, J, and J, E, and the polygon E, F, G, H, J is a regular pentagon. It's a five-sided polygon that has five congruent sides and five congruent angles. And we can use the construction of our regular pentagon to construct a regular decagon. That's a 10-sided figure. By bisecting each angle, like angle EPF, so we make a bisector here, and we do it to each one. So we've got five bisectors of each of our segments, each of our angles. And we can connect those to each pentagonal point, like from this E to that point, we can label that K, and from K to F, and we'll make a regular decagon, 10-sided figure. Just remember to avoid using an I and an O for labels because they can be accidentally confused with a one and a zero. If someone's grading your paper and they can't make out what you've written, you could get it marked wrong when you had it right. And I know some of you say, well, I can put a slash through my zero, but be careful, because in math, that means an empty set. It might be confused for a theta or a phi, which are angle measures. So make sure you write clearly and label clearly with capital letters. Our next lesson is Properties of Parallelograms 6.2a. So now you know how to make a regular quadrilateral and turn that into a regular octagon. You know how to make a regular hexagon and turn that into a regular dodecagon. You know how to make a regular pentagon and turn that into a regular decagon. I hope this video was helpful. Hit the like button if it was. And I'll see you next time. Bye.